This weekend, 2,000 developers in 21 cities around the world took part in a global coding marathon, a hackathon, if you like, called Hack for Good. The aim was to find technology and business solutions to solve and help world issues. So connected by Skype, technology pr uh, programmers, coders, developers and innovators from small tech startups worked with lots of non-government organisations such as UNICEF, Friends of the Earth and Amnesty International in cities as far apart as New York, Kathmandu, Minsk, London, Tel Aviv and of course San Francisco. The idea is pooling resources and designing apps and other solutions that they can come up with and uh, they've had some pretty interesting ideas. So, here to talk to me about it is Ami Spiro, founder of Innovation Warehouse, who are involved in the London event. So you must be quite tired, are you? Because it's 48 hours of, of non-stop idea sharing, isn't it, in these various cities, is that right? It is. Um, I can't take credit for having been there all 48 hours, but I've been popping in and out to see what's going on. Yeah. So just tell us how this works. Um, it's, well, it's basically... Um, all, these are volunteers from a, from a much larger group of technologists who um, are, come together in all of these cities with non-government non organisations, Amnesty International, Macmillan here in the UK and so forth. Um, and these um, NGOs basically put forward challenges um, that have nothing to do with technology. They're, they're challenges, they're problems that they're busy trying to solve. So, for example, um, uh, how can journalists communicate safely uh, with uh, in, in an area where it isn't safe, where they might be targeted and so forth. Um, and it's the, the, the bringing together of the technologists with these challenges that create solutions. And they do actually create solutions. So what was uh, one of the best solutions this time? Um, well, look, a, a couple of them. One, one is a very simple idea, which is to take a, a, a mobile phone and uh, to use the Wi-Fi capability of, of, a, of a smartphone to detect um, uh, uh, if there are other mobile phones that could be buried underneath rubble. So it's a way of detecting if there are people who've got mobile phones who could be, you know, in an earthquake situation or a bombing situation. Uh, another one is again using mobile phones. Um, I, don't, I, th I don't think many people really realise just how, how exposed and how much privacy they don't have when they're mm. using their mobile phone. So just bringing together, say, a journalist with somebody who really does understand how that works um, could help that, per that journalist um, broadcast or publish some information or transmit some information without it being traceable. Uh, and bringing those two groups together is another one of the solutions that been, that's been provided. And presumably it's... You know, obviously, ideas are being discussed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For the NGOs, they get the huge benefit of a lot of bright people and their ideas in a short period of time when it, they could be sort of grappling around for a long time trying to find answers to their problems. Yes, I mean, if they were to try and do it on their own, it would cost them a lot of money. But in this kind of context, uh, people are volunteering their time and they can make it happen in a very short period of time. So even in this 48 hours, uh, there will be solutions and apps that will be usable immediately. Well, that's really interesting. Ami Shapiro, thanks for your time. And, uh, you know, the talk of 48 hours, people in sleeping bags, all discussing these s stories and situations. It's very interesting indeed. Let's now move on, though, because we've got a lot of other business.